It's early August here in Ohio, and while the temperatures are rising, the last thing we want to be thinking about right now is whitetails. But that's exactly the opposite of what you need to be doing if you want to be successful this fall. Today I have two soft-sided tower blinds that we're going to take a look at. The first is a Millennium Q200 Buck Hut, and the other is going to be the Gray Light Twilight. Both of these blinds are very economically priced blinds, perfect for those people that are just getting into the elevated tower blinds. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to set both of these up side by side, kind of run through what I like, what I dislike about both blinds, and then at the end give my final recommendation. Stay tuned, you're watching SellFilm.com. about two hours into the build already. Um, we have the platform base built and then the legs attached. So we're getting ready to put this bad boy up on its side and then uh, it's time to start building the blind portion of this. So again, we're about two hour mark right now and quite a bit to go yet. So stay tuned. three hours in and just about ready to set this thing up for the first time. This part, we have to have more than two people, so I have my lovely wife going to hold the feet while my dad and I lift this thing up. It's just at six o'clock right now. It took us just under four hours to put that together. Just two of us, you know, obviously I'm filming this the whole time too. So, you know, probably take an extra hour, half hour or so to do all that extra work. The platform and base are solid. The top part, metal tubing and things like that are three quarter inch or, or so in diameter. And instructions specifically say not to, to pick it up by the actual blind itself. So you have to actually grab the platform and pull up. Overall, pretty nice blind, especially for that 900 to thousand dollar range or so. So yeah, we're gonna get to work and put together the gray light next.
right, we've been at it for just almost two hours and we've got most of the blind already built. Still have the roof section and the tower portion to build yet. It shouldn't take too long. It's a little after eight right now and we're starting to lose camera light. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the cameras off. We'll get it set up and then tomorrow morning we'll come back and we'll do a quick comparison and a contrast between the two. All right, it's day two of our build. Uh, we got most of the gray light put together except for the tower portion. But while it's down here on the ground, we're actually gonna do a comparison of kind of what we noticed between the two stands. Let's go ahead and get to that now. One noticeable difference between the two blinds is the Millennium Buck Hut. The fabric on the outside and on the roof is a real thin, like almost a single layer fabric. It's quoted as being water resistant. Whereas with this gray light, it's a, a very thick, quilted and insulated outer fabric here, also water resistant, and the roof is actually waterproof. So substantial difference in, in thickness and material, and then also having the waterproofness for your, um, for your roof. Another nice feature of this gray light twilight blind is the door itself. Um, this is a rigid structure, so you have a solid door to enter and exit into, much quieter, uh, you're not using a zipper, and it actually has a lockable lockable handle on here for added security. So we step inside, there's a gasket along the entire interior perimeter of the door, and that's to help keep weather out, keep your scent inside the blind. And then I've also noticed that on this blind, the door entryway is maybe, you know, two inches at most from the floor. Whereas with the buck hut, once you open that up, there's actually probably about a four or five inch lip on there that you can easily catch your foot on. Definitely a safety concern for me. To add to that, the gray light comes shipped with a platform. I think it's approximately 12, 14 inches from the door itself and about just past the width of the door. So nice to be able to come out of your door, step onto something solid before getting onto your, your stairs to climb down. Also above the door here, we have an ozone port for you to be able to put an ozone generator up here in the doorway, spit your ozone out so it's not getting into your blind. As we step into the blind here, both blinds are built very similar with the vertical tubing structure. One thing that's different with this gray light blind is the cross members that are in here, in addition to the additional structure of just having a solid window in itself. So substantially stronger than the Millennium Buck Hut with this gray light blind. They actually tell you to grab the blind itself and use that as kind of your leverage point to, to lift the tower up. The space within this blind is also considerably larger. The buck hut blind is more of an oblong shape, whereas this gray light blind is an octagon shape. I believe the Millennium Buck Hut is about 29 square feet of space, whereas this blind is 36 square feet. The weight capacity of the Millennium Buck Hut is 500 pounds. The capacity of this gray light is 600. The next feature I want to talk about is the windows. Uh, with the Millennium Buck Hut blind, you have zippered windows. There are magnets on there, so as you open the windows, you can take those magnets and stick them to the metal framing of the blind, which is a nice feature. These gray light blind windows are a step above those. They're all plexiglass, so you're able to see out. You can open these easily and quietly. There's just a couple flip lock latches around the exterior of this window. And then all windows are actually on hinges that will stop wherever you let go. So if you're open this up and you, you know, you get to a certain point, a deer looks at you, you can stop and your window's not going anywhere. You can silently open the window the entire direction. Do you want to point out the gasketing also on this window? Again, similar to the door, it keeps your scent in the inside and then also keeps the weather out of the blind itself. As we move back to the outside of the blind here, I wanted to point out these exterior sliding panels. These are great when you have your blind set up and say your sun's shining in the back of the blind. With a quick flip of these little plastic clips, you can slide these exterior slider windows up uh, for the bottom here and then down for the top. And what that does is that effectively seals off that window. So again, say you have sun in the back of your blind or say you only have a shooting direction in you know, a couple different areas, 
you can close up all these extra windows that you're not going to shoot out of to help keep the inside of the blind dark um, and conceal your movement better. Obviously building a blind like this is a time consuming activity. Uh, there's lots of parts and pieces. I think I mentioned on the Millennium Buck Hut there was over 100 pieces. There was easily over 100 pieces on this gray light also. Um, took my dad and I better part of probably four hours per blind. Now granted that was with us filming you know as we're doing this so take off an extra half hour 45 minutes whatever for that extra you know amount of work that we were doing but you know it does take a, quite a bit of time. One thing I did want to show you is the instruction manuals for both of these. We built the buck hut first then we moved over to the gray light after we got the the buck hut done and the instruction manual in here is substantially better. You know parts are identified on diagrams there's color photos and very clear instructions on how to put things together. Another feature I really appreciated with this gray light blind is as you can see, we still have the blind on the ground. We were able to get the shell fabric and the roof fabric on. With the buck hut, for some reason, you have to get that, that blind actually set up on the tower, get the tower pushed up before you actually climb up and put the outside skin on the blind. It was doable from the inside of the blind, but not that easy. Whereas you could walk around the exterior of this blind the entire time, you know, move things around wherever you needed to to get it to fit right. Well, there you have it both blinds. We've got the Q200 buck hut on my right, your left, and then the new gray light twilight on my left, your right. The Q200 retails for about $900 at Bass Pro. And then the gray light twilight, you can actually buy that on our website at cellfilm.com or online at their website. Uh, it retails for $19.99 with the tower or $12.99 without the tower. I obviously realize there's a thousand dollar difference between these two blinds. You can basically buy two of these buck huts for the price of one of these gray light twilights. But in my mind, the additional features of the gray light definitely tip the scales in its favor. It's gonna last longer, it's quieter, you're gonna conceal your scent, protect yourself from the elements better. And then it's also safer, obviously, with the, uh, you know, the built-in platform and, and not having that little lip to step over when you're climbing out of the blind. So in my mind, the gray light wins. Buckhut's still gonna be a very economical choice for, for those guys, a lot of stand locations, so. Thanks for watching. You're watching cellfilm.com.